My dear friends, our topic today is never complain and never explain. And I assure you, this principle holds within it the very key to unlocking the infinite potential that resides within each and every one of you. Let us begin by understanding that the world we perceive around us is nothing but a reflection of our own consciousness. Everything you see, hear, touch, and experience is a manifestation of your inner state. Your thoughts, beliefs, and assumptions are the architects of your reality. And it is within this context that we must approach our discussion of never complaining and never explaining. When you complain, what are you really doing? You are affirming to yourself and to the universe that something is wrong, that you are a victim of circumstances beyond your control. But I say to you, there are no circumstances beyond your control, for you are the operant power in your world. You are God pushed out into expression. And God does not complain about his creation. Consider for a moment the biblical statement. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. This is not merely a poetic description of creation. It is a fundamental truth about the nature of consciousness and reality. When you complain, you are denying this truth. You are saying, in essence, I see what I have made and behold, it is not good. But, my dear friends, I urge you to recognize the power of your own imagination. For it is through your imagination that you create your reality. When you complain, you are imagining undesirable circumstances and giving them life through your attention and belief. You are using the divine gift of imagination to create that which you do not want. Instead, I implore you to use your imagination wisely. Rather than complaining about what is, imagine what could be. See, the world as you wish it to be, not as it appears to be. For appearance is nothing more than a shadow or reflection of past thoughts and beliefs. It has no power to persist unless you breathe life into it. Through your continued attention and acceptance. Now let us turn our attention to the second part of our principle. Never explain. When you feel the need to explain yourself, what are you really doing? You are assuming that others have the power to judge you to approve or disapprove of your actions and decisions. But I say to you, no one has this power unless you grant it to them. I am that I am. This is not merely a statement of existence. It is a declaration of your divine nature. You are that which you conceive yourself to be. There is no higher authority, no external judge who can define you or limit you. When you explain yourself, you are denying your own divinity and placing your power in the hands of others. Moreover, when you explain, you are often doing so from a place of doubt or insecurity. You are, in essence, saying, I am not sure of myself, so I need your validation. But I tell you, there is no need for validation from anyone or anything outside of yourself. You are complete and whole as you are, a perfect expression of the divine. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. The lily does not explain its beauty or justify its existence. It simply is in all its perfection and glory. And so it is with you, my dear friends. You need not explain or justify your being. You simply are perfect and complete as you are. Now some of you may be thinking, but Neville, surely there are times when we must explain ourselves for practical reasons. And to this I say, there's a vast difference between communicating necessary information and feeling compelled to justify your existence or your choices. The former comes from a place of clarity and purpose. The latter from a place of insecurity and doubt. Let us delve deeper into the spiritual implications of this principle. When you complain or explain, you are operating from the level of the outer man, the man of flesh who sees himself as separate from God and subject to external forces. But I say to you, you are not this outer man. You are the inner man, the Christ within the God self. In the Bible we read, the kingdom of God is within you. This is not a metaphor or a poetic flourish. It is a literal truth about the nature of your being. The kingdom of God, the realm of infinite possibility and perfect creation, resides within your own consciousness. When you complain, you are denying this kingdom. When you explain, you are seeking it outside of yourself. Instead, I urge you to turn within, to seek first the kingdom of God, knowing that all else will be added unto you. 
But when you dwell in this inner kingdom, when you align yourself with your true nature as a divine creator, there's nothing to complain about and nothing to explain. You simply are creating your world through the power of your imagination and your assumptions. Let us consider for a moment the story of Job. Here was a man who suffered greatly, who lost everything he held dear. And what did he do? He complained bitterly, questioning God and seeking explanations for his misfortune. But what was the result of his complaints and his demands for explanation? Did they change his circumstances? Did they bring him peace or understanding? No, my friends. It was only when Job ceased his complaints and stopped demanding explanations that his fortune was restored. When he turned within, when he aligned himself with his true nature as a divine creator, his world transformed. And so it is with each of you. Your complaints and explanations do not serve you. They keep you bound to the very circumstances you wish to change. Instead, I invite you to adopt a new attitude, a new state of consciousness, one in which you see yourself as the author of your life story, not its victim, one in which you recognize your own divinity and, and act from that recognition. For when you do this, when you truly embody the principle of never complaining and never explaining, you step into your power as a conscious creator. Imagine for a moment a world in which you never complain, in which you accept every circumstance, every event, every person as a perfect expression of your own consciousness. Imagine the peace this would bring, the clarity, the sense of purpose and power. This is not a fantasy, my dear friends. This is your birthright, your true nature. And now imagine a world in which you never feel the need to explain yourself, in which you stand secure in your own being, confident in your choices and actions, free from the need for external validation or approval. Imagine the freedom this would bring, the authenticity, the joy of being truly and completely yourself. This is the world that awaits you when you embrace the principle of never complaining and never explaining. It is a world of infinite possibility, of divine creativity, of perfect self-expression. And it is available to you right now. But how, you may ask, do we begin live this principle? How do we overcome the habitual patterns of complaint and explanation that have become so ingrained in our daily lives? The answer, my friends, lies in the practice of mindful awareness and deliberate imagination. Begin by becoming aware of your thoughts and words. Notice when you feel the urge to complain or explain. But instead of judging yourself for these impulses, simply observe them with detachment. See them for what they are. Old patterns, old states of consciousness that no longer serve you. Then in that moment of awareness, make a choice. Choose to shift your attention from what is to what could be. Use your imagination to create a new scenario, a new outcome, a new state of being. For remember, your imagination is the very workshop of creation. What you imagine feeling and conviction must inevitably manifest in your outer world. If you find yourself in a situation that tempts you to complain, pause. Take a deep breath. And then ask yourself, how would I see this situation if I were truly aligned with my divine nature? How would I respond if I knew with absolute certainty that I am the creator of my reality? Similarly, when you feel the urge to explain yourself, stop. Take a moment to center yourself in your own being. Remember who you truly are, a divine creator, perfect and complete as you are. From this place of inner knowing, ask yourself, do I really need to explain? Or can I simply be secure in my own truth? As you practice this awareness and make these conscious choices, you will begin to notice a shift in your consciousness. The urge to complain and explain will gradually diminish. In its place, you will find a growing sense of peace, of power, of alignment with your true self. But remember, my dear friends, this is not about suppressing your feelings or denying your experiences. It is about transforming them through the power of your imagination and your assumptions. It is about recognizing that every experience, every circumstance, is an opportunity for growth and self-realization. When you embrace this principle of never complaining and never explaining, you are not turning away from the world. On the contrary, you are engaging with it more fully. 
more consciously than ever before. You are recognizing your role as a co-creator of reality. And you are accepting the responsibility and the joy that comes with that recognition. Consider the words of scripture. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is not merely a suggestion. It is a description of the very process we are discussing. As you renew your mind, as you shift your consciousness from complaint and explanation to acceptance and creation, you are literally transforming yourself in your world. And as you transform, you will find that your outer world begins to reflect this inner change. The circumstances that once prompted complaint will begin to shift. The people and situations that once demanded explanation will fade away or transform. For remember, the outer world is nothing but a reflection of your inner state. But this transformation is not something that happens to you. It is something that happens to you as you. For you are the operant power, the creative principle in your world. You are the one who must choose moment by moment to align with your true nature as a divine creator. This choice, this alignment, is not always easy. The habits of complaint and explanation are deeply ingrained in our collective consciousness. The world around you may seem to demand that you explain yourself, that you join in the chorus of complaint, but I say to you, stand firm in your truth. Be steadfast in your commitment to never complain. For in this commitment, you are not merely changing your behavior. You are changing your very being. You are stepping into your power as a conscious creator, as a divine being in human form. And as you do so, you are lighting the way for others to do the same. Imagine a world in which every individual recognized their own divinity, their own creative power. A world in which complaint was replaced by conscious creation. And explanation was replaced by authentic self-expression. This is the world we can create, my dear friends, through our individual and collective commitment to this principle. But let us be clearly, this is not about creating a perfect world in the conventional sense. It is about recognizing the perfection that already exists within every moment, every circumstance, every experience. It is about aligning ourselves with the divine flow of life, trusting in the perfect unfolding of our individual and collective stories. When you truly embrace this principle, you will find that there's nothing to complain about because everything is serving your growth and evolution you will find that there is nothing to explain because you are perfectly and completely yourself in every moment. This does not mean that challenges will cease to exist. But it does mean that you will approach these challenges from a place of power and creativity rather than victimhood and reactivity. You will see every obstacle as an opportunity, every setback as a setup for a comeback. And as you move through your life in this way, never complaining and never explaining, you will find that you become a beacon of light for others. Your very being will radiate the truth of who you are, inspiring others to recognize and claim their own divine nature. For remember, my dear friends, we're all one. We are all expressions of the one divine consciousness. When you transform yourself, you are contributing to the transformation of the entire world. When you refuse to complain, you are raising the vibration of the collective consciousness. When you refrain from explaining, you are affirming the inherent worth and divinity of every being. So I urge you, my beloved listeners, to take this principle to heart. To make it not just a practice, but a way of life. To embody the truth that you are a divine creator, perfect and complete as you are. To live from the knowing that your world is a reflection of your consciousness. And that you have the power to shape that consciousness in every moment. Never complain. But in complaining, you deny your own creative power. Never explain. For explaining, you deny your own divine completeness. Instead, create, express, be. For in doing so, you are fulfilling your highest purpose in realizing your true nature as God pushed out into expression. Let every moment be an opportunity to align with this truth. Let every breath be a conscious choice to embody your divine nature. Let every thought, every word, Every action be a testament to your commitment to never complain and never explain. And as you do this, watch in wonder as your world transforms. Marvel at the synchronicities that begin to unfold in your life. Delight in the joy and peace that naturally arise when you're aligned with your true self. Embrace the challenges that come your way, knowing that they are opportunities for growth and self-realization.
Well, in truth, my dear friends, there is nothing to complain about and nothing to explain. There is only the glorious adventure of being and becoming of creating and expressing, of realizing and embodying your divine nature. So go forth from this place with a new understanding, a new commitment. Let the words never complain and never explain be etched upon your heart and mind. Let them guide your thoughts, your words, your actions. For in living this principle, you are not just changing your life. You are changing the world. Remember, the kingdom of God is within you. The power to create, to transform, to transcend is within you. It always has been and it always will be. You need only recognize it, claim it, and live from it. And so, my dear friends, I leave you with this final thought. You are God pushed out into expression. You are the author of your life story. You are the creator of your reality. Never complain about your creation. Never explain your divinity. Simply be who you truly are and watch as miracles unfold in your life. Go now and live in the joyous knowledge of your own divine nature. Create consciously, express authentically, and love unconditionally. For in doing so, you are fulfilling your highest purpose and realizing the truth of your being. Remember, never complain and never explain is not just a principle to live by. It is a gateway to your true self a path to your highest potential, and a key to unlocking the infinite possibilities that lie within you. Embrace it fully, live it wholeheartedly, and watch as your world transforms before your very eyes. As we come to the close of our discussion, let us reflect once more on the profound implications of this principle. Never complaining. And never explaining is not merely a behavioral change, but a fundamental shift in consciousness. It is a recognition of your true nature as a divine creator, as God pushed out into expression. When you cease to complain, you are affirming your power to shape your reality. You are declaring to the universe that you accept full responsibility for your life experiences. This doesn't mean you ignore challenges or difficulties, but rather that you approach them from a place of creative power rather than victimhood. Every situation, Every circumstance becomes an opportunity for growth and self-realization. Similarly, when you stop explaining yourself, you are asserting your inherent completeness and worth. You are recognizing that you need no external validation or approval. Your actions, your choices, your very being are a perfect expression of your inner state. In this recognition, you find true freedom. The freedom to be authentically and unapologetically yourself. As you embody this principle in your daily life, you will begin to notice profound shifts. The world around you will start to reflect your new state of consciousness. Situations that once prompted complaint will transform or dissolve. The need for explanation will fade away as you stand secure in your own truth. You will find yourself moving through life with greater ease, joy, and purpose. Remember, my dear friends, you are the operant power in your world. Your consciousness creates your reality. By embracing the principle of never complaining and never explaining, you are aligning yourself with your true divine nature. You are stepping into your role as a conscious creator, shaping your world through the power of your imagination and your assumptions. Go forth and live from this truth and watch as miracles unfold in your life.